Hey, 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 it's Triple A Wednesday, which means it's time for an Ask Alyssa Anything session where I'm going into the comments and answering your questions about the publishing industry and strengthening your story. Thank you so much to everyone in my amazing YouTube community who is engaging with these sessions and asking comments, responding, liking these videos. I can't tell you how much it means to me. And right behind me, we have my trusty sidekick, Luca, who is ready to get in on all the action. A few pieces of housekeeping before we dive in. First, if you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. Right below, there's a little thumbs up symbol. Please hit that because it helps these videos reach more viewers and grow this community. And I have a free resource for any member of my YouTube community who has a current work in progress. It's called my Story Self-Assessment Worksheet. And if you haven't checked it out yet, go ahead and download it. It's free after all. It's a fun, simple way to take a look at your manuscript from a different perspective and see how you could elevate it on the next draft. Downloading it is going to opt you in to my newsletter where I share exclusive interviews with published authors and publishing industry professionals, including a lot of literary agents. And they're giving some really helpful, amazing insights. So you don't wanna miss out on that. And if you wanna catch up on the past newsletters, the link is in the description. We have some excellent questions today, so let's dive in. I am about to begin doing my own edits on my work in progress prior to querying, and I've never done developmental edits before, so the whole process intimidates me. I was wondering if you have any tips or advice on how to make the process feel a bit more clearer and not so vague for those new to it. First, I love, love, love that you have a finished draft and you are thinking, okay, my first step is developmental edits. That's correct. This should absolutely be the first step that you take when you are undergoing the revision process for your book. So many authors immediately skip over to copy editing and proofreading, but really those sentence level edits are going to come much later down the line when the bulk of the manuscript is in the shape and the format and the order that it actually needs to be, right? There's potentially scenes at this point that you haven't written yet, scenes that need to be taken out, so there's no point in diving into really line level work unless you really feel compelled to before you have addressed the big developmental issues. Now, how do you identify those big developmental issues? Well, the truth is that this can be so, so hard to figure out for yourself because when you're so deep in your manuscript, it can be impossible to see the forest from the trees. And in fact, that is why I made my story self-assessment worksheet so if you are in this position of not knowing where to start with developmental editing, it is a great resource to potentially orient you to what you need to strengthen on the next draft. Is it your pacing? Is it a plot twist that isn't working? Is it a character arc that just isn't as developed as it needs to be? Maybe they need another element of backstory, etc. All that being said, the truth is that the most productive developmental work is going to come from getting others' feedback. If you don't have the means to invest in a professional editor, that could be a trusted beta reader or critique partner. I really encourage you to give the draft to someone else, if not now, then very soon, maybe on the next draft, because it is going to be impossible for you to see certain things in your manuscript without sharing it. And once those people provide their feedback, like this character didn't resonate with me, the ending didn't work, it took too long to pick up the plot, then you are going to have much more actionable insights that you can turn back to the page with and you have specific things you can fix. Identifying those things on your own can be really challenging. So at some point you are going to need to share it to get that developmental feedback. Here's an interesting question. I'm writing a novella that's a dystopian about social networking. I know that writers shouldn't worry about the market, but I feel that my subject matter isn't as relevant anymore. My question is, is it still worth it to try to publish something that isn't so relevant anymore? It's admittedly hard for me to answer this without knowing the exact content of your story. I'm not sure what social networking entails in the context of your particular book. But in this case, I would shy away from thinking about what is relevant and what is not relevant to what is an interesting piece of life, of society, of culture, and you know maybe what is not. If the content of your story covers a really pivotal piece of human history, maybe the launch of Facebook, or maybe it is the Vietnam War, right? While these things are in the past and maybe 
no longer affecting our day-to-day -day life because they have already happened and maybe they're not top of mind in society and culture right now, they are still extremely rich to explore. And there's still so much to unpack with those historical events. So that's not to say that a piece of fiction about you know the dot-com boom and the rise of social media wouldn't be really compelling. Or of course, there are still novels being published about the Vietnam War that are extremely compelling. So I don't think that relevance is something that should necessarily be top of mind to you when you're thinking about the content of your story. Instead, I would think about why should we care? What is the human condition I'm exploring in this story? Why is it going to resonate now? I do think that you'll be able to find something, even if you're talking about something that happened in the past, that will still feel relevant and exciting to readers today. We have time for one more question today. When it comes to character introspection, how do we make it compelling? What are some hazards to avoid? How to do introspection when you're not writing in first person. Granting the reader access to the interior minds and emotional landscapes of your characters is what is going to make them connect emotionally with the story. So it is very important for you to understand how to convey interiority. Put simply, this is showing the reader what is going on in the character's mind, especially at pivotal plot moments. Those are the moments where we are going to crave understanding what a character is thinking and feeling. Because in many ways, we are going to want our own emotions as we read that plot twist or development to be validated. Is the character reacting the same way we are? If we don't get any of that introspection, it's going to feel like something in the scene is lacking. So focus on moments where the character would have a strong emotional response to what is going on in a scene and that's where you should really flesh out what's going on in their mind. If you're writing first person, this will be very natural because you will just use the narrative to convey their thoughts as they would think their thoughts in their head. If you are writing in close third person, you will convey this either via the narration, saying something like, Anne wondered how Jack could do something so terrible. Or you would use italics in first person, present tense, to convey exactly what she thinks verbatim, which could be something like, how could Jack do this to me, right? Punctuating intense and climactic scenes with the character's thoughts like this is really going to help immerse the reader in the moment and understand the dynamics at play, what's going on externally versus internally, right? There should be layers to the scene. Where character introspection or interiority can go wrong is if you are conveying almost a stream of consciousness, everything going through that character's mind or their own internal ramblings, and it's just getting repetitive. For instance, if we've already seen Anne say a hundred times that she can't believe what Jack is doing, we don't need to see it again, right? You only need to show it one or maybe two times. We also don't want to see her going off on a tangent and thinking about this thing that happened all these years ago unless it is relevant to the actual scene at hand. So make sure that the interiority you are presenting is very closely aligned to what is actually going on. Otherwise, it will feel like we are being taken out of the scene. I hope you enjoyed the questions today. Keep them coming. If you have a question you'd like me to answer, drop it in the comments here and it will be added to my queue. Before you head out, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button if you are enjoying these sessions, and grab your free story self-assessment worksheet and check out my newsletter link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.